Good evening. Um, welcome to another video uh, on the Scout uh, X4. Um, and today it's a bit of a follow on from the battery, uh, the transmitter battery that I was showing, uh, or showed you guys the other day. Um, today it's going to be based on the actual Scout battery itself. Uh, which is this here, which actually is pretty much most of the weight that's in the Scout. Um, it should really be quite a simple video to show you. Um, and uh, how, how we try and deal with this one is there appears to be two ways of charging it. Um, whether or not uh, there's the best way, I'm not really sure. Um, but what I'll do is I'll show you how um, I started on how I use it um, and we can take it from there. So what we have is we have the iMac B6 LiPo charger. Uh, that's the balancing cable and obviously this is the actual charging cable itself. It all comes in with it. So what I'm going to do is we are going to connect this all up. So first of all, we are going to find the side here, little hole, and in goes the balancing cable into the side there, like so, and then this is the charging cable itself. What I will say is sometimes, sometimes you will get an ever so slight sound of a spark, something like that. Um, nothing to worry about. Uh, this charger, as you can see, is not even on. So, you know, you will get that from time to time. So, it's all connected up. Now all I do is if I put in the power, like so, turn it on at the wall, right, okay. So what we've got is the display screen. Now again, what I tend to do is this, this has been used, so there's not going to be a huge amount of power left in it. I think it's down to about 30 odd percent. So I'm going to balance it because I think there's one cell that's slightly higher than the other. So we go with balance by selecting your left and right. Enter. I prefer to keep it at 3 amps. It basically means that it's almost like it trickle charges it. It doesn't just force loads of power in. Uh, it 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 just it will take longer, but I think it's just better for the battery. And it's six cell, so it's a six S twenty two volt battery. Hold that button down. Right. So now that's checking it. It's happy. It's confirmed that there's six cells. It's happy with everything, and it just wants me to confirm that it's ready to go and charge. So if I hit yes, right, that's now charging. So if we now go to, you won't worry about these. Right, so as you can see, it's measured all of the six cells in that in here. You see that this cell is ever so slightly higher. So what this does now is it balances it all. So it will either whack these these remaining five up, or as you can see now, it's bringing it's discharging the first cell to bring it back down to what everyone else is is on. Uh, you'll see it's working quite quickly to do that, and then it then brings it all back down to equal equal platform. And then builds it back up, and then it will then you'll start getting the, uh, the the full charge that it needs. So a clever little way, um, 
of doing it. Um, now, another way that people tend to do it, and I'll be honest, I've not tried this before, but people are saying that it, it, it allows the battery and the LiPo charger to work together um, through analysing the battery. So what they supposedly do is by turning it on and powering it on, you can see there, that supposedly is now telling the battery and the charger, it's apparently giving it more of a feedback um, to what in here. Everyone is different. Uh, what I were, what I think is, I've never really done it before. And on the lipos, whether it be the transmitter one and everything like that, you generally don't turn them on. This charger is good enough to work out what it needs to do without having the need to have the battery turned on. That's my own interpretation of it. And, you know, they both do, as far as I'm concerned, an equally good job. Um, and if, maybe for safety reasons, I think I may prefer to have the battery off. Um, but I don't know. At the end of the day, that's my own. The first, the first one that I've shown you is the one I prefer most. Um, so uh, I'll just turn this off and turn it off there and as I say I'm more than happy to go with the first option which is just have the battery off and just charge it that way so that's generally how these work um, and they're my settings that I use for charging this battery um, and I hope that you find that useful um, there's no right and wrong way of, of charging a battery at the end of the day. If you want it quicker, just whack up the amps, um, you know. But what I will say is do not, when you're running a Scout, do not fly it to pretty much the bare minimum in the battery. LiPos do not like literally being charged from the top all the way to the bottom. Uh, allow yourself at least 25 to 30 percent left in the battery um, and it, then it should hopefully keep the battery in a very healthy and uh, and long uh, duration um, you do run risks or you start to run risks when you literally drain the battery down to nothing um, so it's recommended that you still keep uh, 25 to 30 percent still left in the battery Maybe on the odd occasion you could get it down further if you're really desperate and you want to fly a bit longer. But generally on the whole, best to keep the battery 25 to 30%. So that's the video today uh, and this evening on the 6S LiPo battery that comes with the Scout. Um, thanks for watching. Please post any comments you've got um, and please rate and subscribe to my channel for uh, further videos um, on this fantastic Walkera Scout X4. Um, more videos will be coming along uh, all the time. Thank you very much.